morning, everybody. Uh, delighted to be here to brief you on our presidency of the Security Council for the month of December. At the outset, let me say that I'm honored to be in New York as India's permanent representative to the UN to preside over the Security Council, coming as it does in the last month of our tenure of the Security Council this eighth time. Over the last two years of our membership of the Council, I can say with confidence that we have been shouldering responsibilities well and making every effort to bridge the different voices within the Council so as to ensure that the Council itself speaks in one voice as far as possible on a variety of issues. We will bring the same spirit to our December presidency. You would have seen the program of work for the month that was adopted earlier today by the Security Council. There are several routine and mandated meetings scheduled for the month based on their respective reporting cycles, as well as some mandate renewals that have been scheduled as well. Given the holidays that come at the end of this month, the program is very packed. Nevertheless, we have tried to leave space for any contingencies. Since you have the program in front of you, I will not get into the details. I will, however, brief you on our signature events. Sorry? Oh, the program is... It's on email. It is being distributed right now. Thank you. So I was saying that we will now... Uh, I will focus on the signature events. Uh, the focus is on two major themes. One, an all-encompassing theme focused on building a new orientation towards reformed multilateralism. And a second theme will be a focus on the global counter-terrorism approach and the way forward. So let's first turn to reformed multilateralism. It is very clear that the UN of today is far from reflective of the true diversity of the UN's wider membership. 22 years after world leaders called for comprehensive UN Security Council reforms, we have not moved an inch and there is even lack of a negotiating text. Similarly, the global development architecture outside the United Nations is equally distorted and would require intense efforts to enhance the coherence and consistency of the international monetary, financial and trading systems. There is a ray of hope, if I may put it that way. During high level week in the course of UNGA 77, 76 countries favored UNSC reforms and 73 spoke for UN reforms. This is not a serendipitous coincidence, but a reflection of the thinking of the wider membership. Clearly, the multidimensional crises facing the world today demand a representative multilateral architecture that is reflective of contemporary global realities and is well equipped to meet emerging challenges. The UN must be fit for purpose. Given this background, the External Affairs Minister of India, Dr. S. J. Shankar, will chair an open debate of the Security Council on 14th December, which we hope will encourage member states to exchange ideas on key issues, specifically how to inject new life into multilateralism in order to ensure that the tools we have today are adequate to address the challenges of the future. As well, what should be the key elements of this new orientation for a reformed multilateral system? No doubt, food for thought for all UN watchers. Then on 15th December, the External Affairs Minister will chair a briefing of the Security Council on a global counter-terrorism approach, specifically an exchange of views on the principles and the way forward. The threat of terrorism is grave and universal, and it is also transnational in nature. You will also agree with me that there has been a resurgence of terrorism in recent times. There is also an increased risk of terrorists exploiting the proliferation of digitalization, new and emerging modes of communication and financing technologies. The existing and emerging threats call for a renewed collective approach to terrorism. This high-level briefing of the Security Council will provide an opportunity for the Council to take stock 
and build on the recent deliberations of the special meeting of the UN Counter-Terrorism Committee held in India in October. As you know, India holds the chairship of this committee. It would also aim to arrive at a way forward for the global community's collective fight against terrorism. Now, let me take this opportunity to also brief you very, very quickly on the special meeting of the CTC held recently in Mumbai and Delhi. This was the first time that the CTC met outside New York in seven years, and also the very first time that the Security Council Counterterrorism Committee met in India. Adoption of the Pioneer Delhi Declaration manifested the resolve of the Council to deal with the new and emerging threats in a comprehensive manner through a set of recommendations for member states in the short term and the development of a normative framework in the form of guiding principles in a longer term. And this will guide member states in addressing the threat going forward. The presence of the victims from the Mumbai terror attacks of 26 November 2008 brought a poignant touch to the events, symbolizing the reposing of faith by the victims in the international community and a reflection that the Council as a custodian, custodian of world peace and security does pay attention to the pain of victims and would work collectively to ensure that not only would the victims get justice, but also that the world becomes a better place to exist by getting rid of the scourge of terrorism. Now, there will also be two side events coinciding with India's presidency. The first would mark the arrival of Mahatma Gandhi at the United Nations on 14 December at a simple ceremony. The Secretary General and the External Affairs Minister of India will inaugurate a bust of Gandhiji, which is to be placed in the prestigious North Lawns of the UN building. Needless to add, the event will take place in the presence of council members, including the five incoming members of the Security Council or the I-5. The second side event will see the launch of a group of Friends for Accountability of Crimes Against UN Peacekeepers. As many of you would know, a more robust peacekeeping has been one of our priorities in the Security Council and in following up to Resolution 2589, which had focused on the safety and security of peacekeepers, the group of friends will keep the spotlight on an issue that is fundamental, and if I may say existential, to the task of peacekeepers. I would also like to mention that starting today, India has taken over another presidency, that of the G20. It is indeed an honor for us to lead a group that represents 85% of the world's GDP and 75% of global trade. As noted by our Prime Minister, our presidency of the G20 comes at a time of crisis and chaos in the world. The world is going through the after effects of a disruptive, once in a century pandemic, conflicts and much economic uncertainty. At such a time, the world looks to G20 with much hope. India's presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role in finding pragmatic global solutions for the well-being of all. And in doing so, to manifest the true spirit of the world being one large family, which is very much a part of Indian ethos. As the G20 president, India will thus set the agenda for the year, identify the themes and focus areas conduct discussions and deliver the outcome documents. As the Indian Prime Minister has stated, the presidency will be ambitious, decisive and all inclusive. Underpinned by the thinking, one earth, one family, one future. We see both these presidencies, that of the Security Council for this month and the G20 for the next one year as a new responsibility for ourselves. We will try our utmost to ensure that the hopes and expectations of the global community are met. One final word, we will also uh, be promoting millets. Uh, 2023, as you know, is the International Year of Millets. And this was a resolution that was adopted unanimously by the General Assembly. Millets are, millets are very healthy, environment friendly. And uh, in the course of the next few weeks and months, I would urge you and we would certainly welcome you to some of our events where we will be propose, uh, promoting millets. Thank you very much. Now be the first to know about the latest updates on our new news app. Go on your Android or iOS, search for HW News Network, download our app, 
Choose the language you prefer to get updates in and be up to date with the latest news.